finally, after months of seeing this game, hearing about it in previews, even going so far back as to have this game randomly announced in a crowd at EA Play, Jedi Fallen Order is finally here. I picked it up at GameStop, 9 p.m. Eastern is when they were selling it, so they actually sold it like three hours before midnight, so I had a chance to kind of get a head start on this game, and I'm just about finished with it. I'm like right at the end, and I kind of wanted to just give my overall thoughts and impressions on this game because I think this is probably one of the best Star Wars games. That's right, best Star Wars games that I've just I've ever played. Now there are still issues with this game and I'm going to get to that because I do hope that this is the start of something for Respawn and EA. Because I can't believe EA's logo is on this thing. I had to check like 3 times before making this video to make sure that yet that is EA's logo on here because up front it's completely single player. There are no microtransactions. There is a definitive start and end to this game. It's not a live service, and I, I can't believe it. But yes, they really did let Respawn make a fully single player Star Wars game that is, I would say, in line with what we've had with like Jedi Outcast, Jedi Academy, even Force Unleashed. I like those games. I like games where you get to basically play as a Jedi or, or a character that's kind of in the middle, a mercenary, but you have access to a lightsaber and you slowly build up with force powers and it has some mild RPG elements thrown in there. I like these type of games. But Respawn took that idea, looked around at the landscape of games and said, okay, we'll grab some of this, we'll grab a little bit of this, we'll get some Metroid, we'll get some Zelda, we'll get some Sekiro, we'll get some Uncharted, and we'll just we'll just throw it all in the mix. And then when I thought I figured out all of the games that were in here, all of a sudden they grab Shadow of the Colossus off the shelf and throw it in too. And you know what? I, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I these games are good for a reason, so to take some of the ideas from them and just mash it up and throw lightsabers in the mix with force powers, yeah, that that's that's what I want in a Star Wars game. This is, like, the Star Wars game that I've always wanted. There is so much in this game when you're playing it that it's just, it's exciting to play through. Let's, let's start from the beginning here. You start, you play as Cal, who actually survived the Purge, which is when they executed Order 66 to wipe out all of the Jedi. Of course, the clones turned on them, and it made it easier for them to take them out because they betrayed them. A lot of them, it, we saw in the movie during the Clone Wars, where they would shoot them in the back, and it was, it was a, a whole, a whole thing. But Cal actually survived, and he decided to hide out, basically distancing himself from the Force, but through a series of events, I'm trying to be semi-vague here, he ends up being found out and he ends up being on the run. He does have his lightsaber with him. So you pretty much get thrown in and you're using the lightsaber pretty quickly. And the tutorial level was eh, but then all of a sudden you get your lightsaber it comes out and the whole thing changes. Like just the opening part where you have your lightsaber and it's raining and you're fighting stormtroopers. It was awesome. And it's so hard. I, th I think it's harder than people realize to get the lightsaber correct in a game. Respawn did it. This is the best implementation of a lightsaber that I've seen so far over Jedi Outcast, which was very well done for its time. It was extremely well done over. Uh, well, I didn't really like Force Unleashed. Force Unleashed felt like you had a baton at the time, even over the Obi-Wan game where you use the right stick to control the lightsaber. Yeah, I'm going back here. OK, uh, it it's yeah, it's the best implementation that I've ever seen for a lightsaber. It sounds great. It has impact. The one issue, I think, and this is going to sound weird to people who don't play a lot of the Jedi games, is there's no dismemberment on uh, anyone who looks like a human, basically. But it, there, there is dismemberment on uh, any animals or creatures or any craziness you fight outside of just human figures. You do end up dismembering and chopping them up. Visually, the game, I think, looks good enough. I, I don't know if the visuals necessarily match up to the performance issues of this game because there are quite a few performance issues, which we'll go over as we get further in with some of the negatives to the game. But visuals at least get the job done. And it is built on Unreal Engine 4, which was another thing that shocked me because I guess EA didn't force Frostbite, which maybe that had to do with them wanting to get this game done sooner rather than later as Unreal Engine 4 is a bit easier to work with, I would say, than Frostbite at this point, especially for Respawn. And... To, to see visually how they have it set up. It works well enough to tell the story, to play through, and get a good experience that feels cinematic, but at the same time, super action-packed. Roger that. Come on, 
I mean, the sounds in this game are great. The music is good too. Like the music really hits when there's emotional moments happening in cutscenes, or they're they're kind of playing through some of the story. But just the sound effects. They have finishing moves where if you have their stamina meter, stamina meter built like just knocked down, like from Sekiro, for example, uh, you'll get the chance to do a finishing move and they kind of play around with the sound and the music at the time where it kind of skips as you're hitting them with it just to make it feel like you really hit them. <laughs> The other thing is this game is not linear. That was the biggest shock to me when they first started talking about it after their E3 presentation because they showed us like one level that looked like Uncharted mix of Star Wars and we thought, well, are you just are you just going level to level and that's kind of it? No, you can go to the hardest level basically right away. Like they don't stop you. You'll you'll get messed up. It'll be hard to traverse because you won't have any of the cool moves or anything. You can go do it though. Basically, you start out on a planet, and then you have the opportunity to use a map to go to different planets with your ship basically being your hub world. And they disguise it pretty well, acting like you're traveling around, and really you're just picking levels and you're basically teleporting there, right? Uh, but they have it all dressed up with the ship, and it's traveling, you see out the windows. And But you're able to pick wherever you want to go, and then after you go to one, this is where Metroid comes in, you get moves or, or different abilities, force powers, for example, and you can go back to the older ones, like the starting level, and then there are more paths that you open up from there. It tells you your percentage that you've explored, it tells you how many chests you've found, secrets, and I'm gonna say this, there are some good secrets, but the vast majority of them are cosmetic items, which kind of kind of threw me through a loop. It was very strange that so many things hidden were cosmetics. It made me wonder if there were plans for these to be uh, microtransactioned out or something because they are everywhere. And it's to the point where you might even feel like you shouldn't look as hard, but then occasionally they'll, th they'll throw some stuff in that you don't want to miss. You know, whether it's health upgrades, stim upgrades, which are like your health packs, basically force upgrades, or I, I don't want to ruin it, but I, I can't even really say it, but there are some big time weapon upgrades, we'll say. They did show one at X019, but I put it on Twitter and some people weren't even that 100% sure on that being in the game. You want to go back, okay, to some of the places as well. Like, go back to the first place at least after you complete uh, the next planet, go back to that first one and check it out. There's something cool waiting for you. There is a full skill tree in the game, and it does share some of the characteristics, like we said, of, of Sekiro or Dark Souls, where you will gain experience as you're defeating enemies, or you're scanning things, or you're finding different locations, and that experience will build up at a bar at the top. As soon as it completes, like, one full bar, it'll give you a number next to it, one, two, three, four, etc. And if you die while you have a bar partially full, that experience will go away, but you'll keep the bars that you have stored. However, if you want to get that one back, the experience, you have to go, you have to find the person, the enemy, uh, that defeated you, and you just have to hit them once. Basically, you just have to take a little bit of their health away, you will immediately regain all of your health and the experience, the partial experience that you've lost. It's... It's Dark Souls-like, it's uh, Sekiro-like, but not as punishing as you don't lose all of your experience. From what I've seen, you just lose the partial bar that you had filled, and that is, of course, a way for you to go and hunt down the person and get revenge on them, or you can just keep moving on. You don't necessarily have to go back and get them. But if you are building up your experience, you need a place to spend it, and that comes down to the skill tree. And the skill tree, from what I've seen, isn't huge, but it is impactful. It means a lot to go through it because as you're going through it, you'll get some moves that are very important. You will have the ability to do things like throw your lightsaber, which does great damage at times. Uh, you have the ability to have heavier hits. It will, of course, also upgrade some of your force powers. As you gain them, you get new things in the skill tree opening up for force push and pull as an example. Uh, you'll also be able to upgrade your health, your force bars, and a few other things. There are some fun little surprises hidden in that skill tree. So it is, at times, even if you want, you can just start kind of grinding away in different areas because when you rest, the enemies come back like Dark Souls, for example, or Sekiro, and you do have the ability to grind a bit if you would like to fill out some of that skill tree to make different bosses or enemies or just your time kind of traversing through a level easier. The story itself, I think is good enough. Like, I think if you're a Star Wars fan and you're looking at this wondering, is that a game I should pick up just for the story? Maybe. I So far from what I've been playing through, they do try to tie it into the universe somewhat. Like, there are some characters 
a few in this game that are from the actual Star Wars universe, from even movies, but I don't know how impactful this whole thing is going to be by the time we get to the end, because so far, it's been very, very minor when it comes to impact in the, in the, just the overall series. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that uh, I hope to see improved if they do have respawn to another game like this. And I have a plan. I have an idea for them, something they can do next. I'll talk about that at the end. But uh, a few things, the platforming isn't great. It's kind of floaty. Like th there are times where you're not 100% sure if you're going to make a jump and then you get close. And then for some reason, your character might teleport over a little bit. I guess that might play into the glitchiness of it. Or you're not really sure if you can grab a ledge necessarily or even a rope. I think if they put one of those systems in where you can hit a button and you can, I guess, quote unquote, scan your environment and different things will light up around you, that might help them out a bit. I, I will say... There's not heavy punishment if uh, platforming goes wrong. Like, if you don't quite make a jump, it literally just takes you right back to the spot that you jump from, basically. And it takes, like, a tiny bit of your health. So, it's very forgiving with the platforming. Maybe they, they kind of understood that it wouldn't be the greatest platforming ever, and that's why they did it. Uh, the game's also very glitchy. And I ran into this a few times. There was one point where uh, we had to shift between scenes because something happened in the game. And I found myself, instead of being put into a room, just completely clipped through and in space. And I'm looking around and I can see the, the walls, right, kind of made up, but it's it was super glitched out looking. There have been times where I've gotten stuck in a wall and the enemies are just destroying me because I, I can't do much about it. I kept parrying them, but there wasn't there wasn't much I could really do. And I just I just got pretty much crushed at that point. So there are a few things that uh, would annoy you and would cause you to restart your game, but nothing that's like erasing my save file or getting me to the point where I have to restart everything when it comes to my save. The performance is also very questionable. I'm playing on the Xbox One X. Apparently the S is terrible. Like it's not even worth playing on that thing. Uh, the PlayStation 4 Pro is a bit better f compared to the S and then a regular PlayStation 4. I'm not 100% sure why it's so uh, poorly optimized. It's Unreal Engine 4 unless... Maybe this is a game that had a short development window and they just they wanted to get it done and maybe patches will follow. Can't guarantee that at this time, so I'm not going to add that in as a as like, oh, they'll take care of it. You never know, right? They might just move on from this. Who knows? But the performance is off. There's a cinematic and a performance mode. The performance mode is an uncapped frame rate and it is uh, it's all over the place. Like there are times where the frame rate just nosedives and there are times where it's very smooth. It's very unpredictable. The cinematic mode is, I believe, just a capped 30 and that's more stable. So if you're looking for a more stable, uh, I guess, experience and you're on an Xbox One X or a PlayStation 4 Pro, stick with cinematic mode. Or if you have a good enough PC, I'm sure just buy it on PC. I'm sure the load times, which are horrendously long, are better there as well. Uh, for going to an SSD because on the Xbox One X that I'm playing on, sometimes those load times after just getting uh, killed by a, a mini boss or something are minutes long. The map's also a bit hard to follow. Now, there are several layers to the levels because they're they they're pretty complicated. Like There's a lot going on in some of these levels, so maybe just making a map for what they've been trying to do would be kind of difficult, but even if they had like a mini map at the top right or if they had a way to select where you want to go and it'll draw like a path in front of you, that might help. Also, it'll show you the easiest way to get there or the fastest way to get there. And as far as I can tell, at least for where I am now, there's no way to teleport between like uh, meditation zones. I think that would have helped, especially uh, if you go back to places you've been. It, like if it's a place that you've essentially beaten the main object objective, I think it would have been better to be able to teleport between these meditation zones uh, just, to, just to give you more of a reason to go back. You're not like, oh, I have to walk, I have to go all the way back to my ship just on foot. That can be kind of annoying after like the eighth time you've done it going through that world. The last one really isn't a negative as much as a missed opportunity. I think the fact that you're collecting so many parts for your lightsaber would have been cool if there were statistical effects to it. And maybe that's something they explore if they do something like this later on, like another game in the series or just just another Jedi game is where the lightsaber parts that you collect affect like the strength of it, maybe the speed, maybe it it 
changes the length uh, of the lightsaber, it makes it faster, for example, but you don't have as much range. I feel like there could be some cool stuff they could do there because just collecting the cosmetics, while it's fun for me to take the lightsaber and change it to purple, like the, the the hilt and everything, it doesn't really do a ton. So there's not as much reason for people to go out of their way to traverse some uh, extra branching paths, unless you just want to be a completionist, I still think it's worth looking for the stuff. Just, just a little extra pull would have been nice to look for something that would make your lightsaber better. But overall, the game will take you 15 to 20 hours to beat the main story, depending on the difficulty. Uh, I am on the, uh, second to hardest difficulty, I believe. I'm going to play through it again on the hardest, because I really do like this game. I think a pretty good value proposition for the $60. I think it's worth buying. If you're a Star Wars fan, or you just, you want a game that's, that's good with lightsabers. There you go. Good game here to pick up. I hope that Respawn gets a chance to do another straight up single player, no microtransaction style game like this going forward. And if I give them a suggestion, I think Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight desperately needs a remake. It's so hard to convince people to go back and play that game, but there is a great game there it just looks really, really bad and doesn't even control that great anymore. So if there could be a full remake of that game, bring uh, Kyle Katarn back from his, uh, when he first became, I guess, a Jedi, that would be really cool and I would love to see that. But hey, it's up to Respawn. They definitely are, I will say this, they're very good at making games at this point. Titanfall is good. Titanfall 2 is good, uh, right? We saw that. Uh, people like Apex Legends, and they go and make a, a game like this with a lightsaber that is the best implementation that I've ever seen in a game. Let me know what you guys think about this game. If you picked it up though, down below, I'm very curious. Make sure you guys like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys next time.